Our scripture text today is from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. Hear now the word of God for all of us, the people of God. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets, who were before you. This is the word of our Lord. I need to make really no introduction to our guest preacher this afternoon because he is a blessed peacemaker. I am so honored to share with you all today, for those of you who were not able to hear him earlier, Archbishop Elias Schiffler. the Sermon on the Mount. I was supposed to speak about that. I don't know how to start, where to start, how to end, where to end. I will give you some flashes into that sermon as I understand it from my point of view, from my place, being a man from Galilee. I want to place the Sermon on the Mount right after the famous miracle of the healing of the crippled in Capernaum. There were people coming from all around, Tyre and Sidon, Galilee, Judea and Samaria, from Jerusalem, to listen to that strange man who few days ago gave food to 5,000 human beings, men, not counting women and children. He had only five loaves and two fish. And when he went to rest at the house of Peter in Capernaum, they brought him a crippled whom he healed, starting by forgiving his sins after he has seen the faith of those men who carried him to that strange man from Galilee. He saw their faith and said to the crippled, your sins are forgiven. Take your mattress and go away. And they went to sleep to make a long story short. They don't sleep like we do today. Each one his own bed. They use like I they use when I was, was a kid. They put the mattress on the floor and they cover themselves with one or two covers 
And when it's cold like in Galilee, the father will sleep on one side and the, other, the mother on the other end to keep the children warm. And that's how they went to sleep. Surely Peter placed Jesus beside him to sleep. And early in the morning, Peter got up, looked beside him, the Lord is not there. Where is he? And people started crowding in front of the small house of Peter. He did not find the Lord in his house. He said, probably, at he, as he is used, he went somewhere to pray, and he dressed up quickly and went to look for him. And he found him on a hillside, sitting there. Those who were never there imagined that hill as being higher than the Himalaya. It's not. It's even below sea level. What makes it so high is the height of that man from Nazareth who sat there and Peter went to look for him. He saw him. He was conversing with his father. Prayer is not a question of begging favors from God. The best prayer is to be present to God. You even don't need to speak, to say anything. Be present to him and he will be present to you. He saw Peter coming with the disciples, with the crowd coming all to look for him. He did not say, go away, I'm conversing my, with my father. He saw them like a sheep, like sheep without a shepherd. He got pity of them. He said, come forth, come closer, closer and closer. Sit down around me. And they sat around him. He was not happy with the closeness they had with him. He will never be happy with us being just close to him. He would de deliver us his secret few weeks later on Mount of Olives when he will be eating the Last Supper. And he will see his disciples say to them, I yearn to eat this meal with you. I never eat it again before we eat it together in the kingdom of my Father. Take this bread, this is my body. Take this wine, this is my blood. Be one with me as I am with you. That's what was his great ambition. When they sat down, he opened his mouth like a big rabbi and started teaching them. In English, it is not a good translation that way. Blessed or happy. We have two texts of St. Matthew's Sermon on the Mount. It was written in Aramaic. And instead of blessed, we read in the original text, Tovahun or Ashre. And Ashre means the name Ashre is straight. The verb yashar is straightened up and the reflected, reflecting verb is yashar, straighten up yourself. Wow, when I read it like that, I take note that it's not moral values he was proclaiming. It's not a state of peaceful existence in saying, Happy are the poor, happy are the poor in spirit. No, he was calling his disciple to act. Go ahead, stand up, move, do something. Straighten up yourself, you poor in spirit. It's not as we understand it today in many languages. When we say a man is poor in spirit, we, we mean he is idiot. No, it means 
like the poor is hungry for bread, so the poor in spirit is hungry for God. He did not call his disciples to sit quiet and feel happy just because they are hungry and thirsty for justice. He called them, urged them with all his power. My dear friends, get up, move, go ahead, do something freely and truly. You are hungry and thirsty for justice. When he came to the peace, <laughs> the only thing the Lord did not want from them, as he does not want from us, is to reduce ourselves to be peace contemplators. Peace needs no contemplator whatsoever. <laughs> he invited them, get up, move, do something, go ahead, get your hands dirty. If you want to be peace builders, not peace contemplators. God needs people who are proactive for peace, who accept to risk something for peace, who give up their quietness in order to provide peace. And peace in the old language, shalom. Me has two roots in it. One is shalom. That means Pay. There is a price for what you are going to do. And the other root is shalem, which means perfect. In order to be perfect, you have to pay the price. And that's what peace is. Isn't that what Martin Luther King did? He paid his life in order to have peace. Not for the black people, but for all Americans. Isn't that what Mahatma Gandhi has done in wanting to create peace in India? Not to change the road with the British, but to keep welcoming them. But they have to convert to their own law, to their own principles. So many examples. And the best example of getting his hands dirty, all his body dirty, is the example of Jesus Christ himself. He wanted to bring us the peace from heaven. And there is nothing better in order to redeem your friend than to give your life as a price of his redemption. This Sermon on the Mount ends after the eight first verses with the appeal of the Lord calling his disciples to be the light of the world. Or to be also the salt of the food. How many times, my brother and sister, we pride ourselves in our being, saying, We are, we are the light of the world. We are the salt of the world. And we think the Lord was just <laughs> prizing, praising ourselves. You are better than others. None of that, my dear brothers and sisters. When he said to his disciples, when he is saying to us here in this holy church, you are the salt of the earth. It must be so difficult for you to be. I know. The salt, you never offer any of your guests a dish full of salt to eat. You would not appreciate that. But to be the salt of the earth, that means to be very small quantity that melts in the food and gives a special flavor to the food. It's a calling for humility. Be humble, accept to disappear in order to give your society the real flavor. And to be the light of the world does not mean that we are better than others. You never, when you want to go to another town, you take your car and start driving and there is sun on the road here to Spokane. You don't stop in front of that sign and say, here I am in Spokane. 
you'll be out of mind if you do that. The sign is made for us to pass it over, to forget it behind, and go continue to the dark. And you are the light of the world. <coughs> Means you have to be humble enough, like the candle, which burns itself in order to give light around. To be the, the light of the world means that we Christians need to be like the road signs. We show the way to others. We do not invite others to stop around us and praise us. That is not wise. We need to show them the way. Forget us and go ahead. How many times I hear from people in your country, people who are mighty financially, who are mighty also scientifically, who say, we play a very small role. We want to remind people that God is the Lord. This is what means to be the light of the world. And you allow me to be very frank with you. I am not from a wealthy family. My family home was destroyed by the Israeli army. My village was destroyed. Our land was confiscated. We had to go away with the clothes we had on us. Very poor family. And I listened to the poor, saying to those who are self-sufficient with what they are, Oh, Christians, we know that you believe you are the light of the world. Continue as much as you want, but please turn down your projectors. You are blinding us with, our, with your light. I invite you very sincerely not to blind others with your light so they can no more see the road to the Lord. Show them the way. Be a modest light, a light oriented toward the target, not towards yourself. I know how difficult is that for me, for you, for everyone. But this is the way to the kingdom of heaven, towards which we are all marching together. <coughs> you in this beautiful city, and I there in Galilee. It's not less beautiful despite the problems and the difficulties. We have, we Christians, in Galilee, and that's what I say to everybody. We have to be the light in that society, full of self-sufficiency, full of self-awareness, refusing dignity for others, imprisoning others in their own preconceived ideas, let people be free, and you will live in a free world. Yes, brothers and sisters, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Be it. It's never achieved fully. It's always a yearning to go on. And the Lord said, be perfect as your father is perfect. I think in order to understand these eight verses of the Bible, we need to see God. And in order to see God, we have two ways. First, we have to close these two holes in our face that we call the eyes. Close them well and go into yourself and remember and accept that you were created on the image and with the light of God. Accept yourself and accept what God has said about you. He looked and said, that is very beautiful. You are very beautiful. Because God is there. There's another way to see the Lord. Do not be blinded forever. Open your eyes widely and look at your right hand, at your left hand. 
see the person who is there and say, I see the dignity of my God, the face of my God on the face of my neighbor. I have a mirror at home that was sent to me by a Mexican artist. And under that beautiful, very well-framed mirror, he wrote a statement. Abuna, come and see what God has created most beautiful. You all have mirrors at home. I invite you to go and see what God has created most beautiful. Go there, but not always alone. Take someone with you. Don't always take the ones whom you love. Take the one with whom you don't sympathize so much. And remember when you look at his face in the mirror, this is what God has created most beautiful. And the Lord said to us, love your enemy. Take him with you to the mirror. Bless those who curse you. Take them with you to the mirror. And remember that they are children of God, created as you were, very beautiful. And ask yourself, what have we done to each other to become so cruel to each other, to label each other? I will stop here. I thank you for attention. Pray for us. We need your prayer back in Galilee so that we become truly and really a salt and a light around us in that very complex and complicated society. May God bless you, bless your country, bless this church very special. Amen. Amen.